Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Flying Goat Farm podcast with me, Lisa Check. Um, it's episode nine of season three, and today we're going to be talking about avoiding burnout and finding inspiration for your creativity. But first, here's what's happening on the farm. It is uh, the first day of February 2022. Um, it has been, I kind of want to say mild. Um, it's been extremely cold, but we have hardly had any snow at all. Um, we've had two storms come through. The first one, I think we got like six inches. And um, the second one that was just last weekend, it was supposed to, it was that big nor'easter that really um, hit Boston and New York and upwards that way. But I think we got maybe an inch, maybe, um, not too much. Uh, but it has been cold, which is good for the animals because, which you might think that's strange. Lisa, it's cold. Why is that good for the animals? Well, when we get a really hard freeze like this, then some of the parasites that give them um, trouble, um, gut trouble, uh, die and are cut way back. So that's always good. Um, they, it's a nice sunny day today. And so they are all out sitting in the sunshine. Um, they're using that radiant sun solar energy to heat themselves up. Uh, both dogs are in the midst of their um, separate flocks. And um, it's very cute because they all seem to gather together um, and the dogs really take care of them. So that's what's happening on the farm. So just to recap what the season has been about, it's been all about creativity. Creativity is our birthright. It's something that makes us uniquely human. And making with our hands connects our heart and our head our hands, our imaginations. It, um, it brings us joy into our lives and into other people's lives when they see what you have created or perhaps taste what you have created or listen to what you have created. Um, so it's also that creativity connects us to other human beings, really. It, it's part of our community. And even if you feel like you've lost some of your creativity, you can definitely strengthen it. Um, you can develop and nurture creativity in the young ones in your life, whether that's your own children, grandchildren, um, nieces, nephews. Um, even for me, I don't, we don't have children, but I was a school teacher for a long time. And so developing and nurturing creativity was really an important part of how I saw my job. And yes, there's lots you can read and research about creativity. There's uh, one of the podcasts is um, a lot of great resources for you, but it's not just enough to read and research. You also have to do it. So burnout. It, this can hit us in so many facets of our lives. And this happens when we are expending a lot of energy and whether that be um, creative, creatively or in any other aspect of our lives, we're expending a lot of energy and we haven't made time for ourselves. We haven't made time to rest and fill up our own creative tanks or our own, um, our own tanks in whatever area, your work tank, um, your, your family tank. You've taken a lot out of your creative bank, so to say, so to speak, um, and you need to make some deposits into there so that you can fill fill up that bank account again and be able to um, generate other creative thoughts. And it's important to know that it, it's a natural part of the creative cycle. Um, it will come to you someday. Um, and it's always good to have a plan on how you're going to deal with it when it comes along. Um, the best way to address this is with self-care and self-compassion. Again, knowing that it's just part of the creative cycle and giving your time to rest and rejuvenate. And even the word that I tend to use is hibernate. And for me, this, this time of year 
is kind of my time, has always been historically my time to quote unquote hibernate. Um, I don't have another uh, big show until May. So this is time where um, I can build back inspiration. I can um, fill up my tanks. I can take a class. I can do things that are going to um, fill me up creatively and not, I don't have to expend a lot of creative energy going out. So um, that's part of what my cycle is. And again, there's going to be times when you're working really hard on something and then you, you would, you know, take a back seat, get some rest, fill up your tanks and then go out again and, um, and make, make some more creative things. Um, and just knowing that that is part of the natural cycle of things makes it so you don't, um, get worried and anxious that, oh my gosh, like this is writer's block or, you know, I'm never going to be creative again, or, you know, having those kind of thoughts that can really interrupt the whole flow of what you you've been doing. No, this is just a time where you need to rest, give some self care, be compassionate with yourself and fill up your tanks. So some of the ways that you can fill up your tanks is finding inspiration around you. Um, this is something that is really important to me. Um, it's something that I do nearly on a daily basis in one way or another. Um, so finding this inspiration around you requires you to be observant. Excuse me, I have a little frog in my throat today. <clears throat> it requires you to be observant and opening yourself up to the new all around you. It can be nature walks. That's what I'm doing. Um, I walk around the property every day. Things change. Um, I haven't done it so much with the snow on the ground, um, but the, those walks will be coming back. You can go to a museum. You know, if you are local to me, we've got the Smiths, all the Smithsonian museums that are free to get into. Um, but there's all kinds of interesting, wacky uh, museums all around the country um, or an art gallery. Um, you can go window shopping like that was that was one of our creative exercises earlier on in the season, going to a farmer's market um, and just to observe and look. Of course, you can buy and of course you can taste, too, but to also come prepared, bring your curiosity Bring your camera or your sketchbook or your journal to write in um, and document those journeys and really um, honor them, make them as a special activity. So again, you are feeling like you're really doing something for yourself, which will add to that self-care and make it so that you feel, oh, I'm, I'm doing something for myself and um, this is going to come out in a creative activity at some point. Um, this is also a good place for me to, again, talk about the artist way. I've talked about it a number of times this season. Um, it was published 25 years ago, and simply it changed my life entirely um, 25 years ago. Um, there are three parts of it. The first um, that is really important is writing three pages every day. She wants you to write longhand. Um, it's a way to... Um, clear worries from your mind. It kind of helps you envision what your next steps are going to be. It becomes a practice that frees your mind up and makes room for the creativity that you can have during the day. Um, I use a computer program for this, um, a website called um, 750words.com. And um, they figured that Three pages is about three, 750 words, and you can just write on there every day. Um, and I, it, it is a practice that I have had um, for, uh, well, off and on for the whole 25 years, but um, really probably for the past at least 10 years, I've been consistently doing it every single day. And my days, if, if I don't do it, like if I'm on vacation, 
this um, this website lets you give your schedule some time off. But even then, I feel like, oh, how can I start my day without actually doing this? So I tend to, even when we're away, I will take um, a notebook and write longhand just because it is deeply ingrained as part of my practice. The second part is the artist date. And this has always been hard for me. And I never really do it. It sounds so great. And I would love to do it. But I just haven't found a way to do it on a consistent basis. Basically, the premise is to take yourself on a date each and every week. This is alone time. And it's again, it's a way to fill up your bank and satisfy, you know, your your curiosity, um, see new things, do new things. She has an, uh, uh, Julia Cameron has an auxiliary book that is actually, there must be 365 different artist dates. And then not all of them are actually having you leave your house. There are some, um, some activities in there that would be deemed an artist date that you can do within your own home. So um, I, when I have done the artist dates, I have so enjoyed them. I just, again, I need to make time for that, which we'll talk about in a second. And the third part um, is the walk. She suggests that you walk daily, again, alone. Um, she, without music, without something else going on in the background, and this is, again, so you are observant, you are silent, your mind can be free, and you can work through, um, maybe if you're stuck on a project or something, you, by walking and being silent and being observant, you find that some of those ideas will come to you naturally. Um, and that I mostly do too. Sometimes I do listen to a podcast, but um, I do walk every day. And I have found that it is really beneficial and it does dislodge things um, and helps me to be more creative. So the other thing you can do is go in search of inspiration. Um, you can Google for images. What I prefer is to use Pinterest and um, if you've taken any of my um, courses in person or my online courses, I suggest that you make um, boards, d Pinterest boards or digital files where you can collect the images that appeal to you. Kind of like if you've ever done a vision board or a collage where when, you know, magazines were more prevalent and you would pull out pictures out of a magazine that like spoke to you said something that, you know, you want either that you love the picture or you love the words or something that you would put it into um, a folder to be used in a um, future date. So with the Pinterest boards, um, I have Pinterest boards that are about a color. So if I, I have one that's green, so there's a lot of leaves and, um, but even in that one, I think I have some like copper patina pictures and and rust pictures and things like that that have like that that coppery green uh, patina in them and so you just start putting images onto these boards it could be um i have one that's um like art inspirations where i collect um artwork that is um really inspirational to me and whether that's for the color combination or for the subject matter or something like that. Of course, you can also do, you know, the recipes I want to make. Um, or I, I know I have boards for hats or sweaters or knit style, like how people are wearing their knitwear. Um, especially there was a time there where I have, there was a lot of men wearing sweaters and it was like, yeah, um, they, they look like, um, like things out of GQ and, uh, it's gives you ideas of how to, you know, wear sweat, how you, you are going to wear your knitwear or someone you love would wear your knitwear. 
Um, if you combine this kind of activity with writing, again, you can you can determine like, so why did I pick these images? Is there a theme with them? What connects them? What is it that interests you, interests me about them? Is it the color? Is it the composition? Um, is it something that, oh, this is inspirational because I would like to have an item like that? Or is it, I would like to make an item like that? Or I really, I'd love to find yarn that would have those three colors in it. By combining with a little bit of writing and thought time, um, you can really, again, start to figure, start to figure out where your creativity lies. And it is really important to find inspiration weekly or daily. The more that you look and observe, the more creative juices that you'll have. And just like with your exercise program, um, it's important just to set aside time, whether that's doing something once a week, like going on an artist date once a week, or going for a daily walk and being sure that, especially if you are really, really busy, that you can write it in your planner and give yourself a certain time. Maybe you could, if you are someone who is back in the office at this time, you could um, do your daily walk on uh, during your lunch hour or lunch, if, you know, as a teacher, your lunch half hour. Um, you could go and do a walk, um, that kind of thing. So putting it into your planner and making it a priority, making yourself a priority um, is really important. So the way that I have structured this is, yeah, I, like I said, I walk the property every day. I usually do it right after I feed animals in the morning or the evening. Um, and I always bring my camera on my phone and I just open myself up to observe new sights and sounds. I also set aside Pinterest time a few times a week. Um, if you're like me and you're susceptible to going down a rabbit hole, set a timer. Um, go on there for five minutes and after five minutes is over, boot yourself out. You can, if, if you do that, you know, three times a week, five minutes, it's only 15 minutes and you haven't wasted like, a whole day down that rabbit hole. And it's also important to find your tribe if you haven't already. Finding a group that shares your passions and your interests can also fuel your inspiration and your creativity. Um, it's always great to link with other people um, to see what they're making and to talk about what you're making and to help uh, figure out any kind of difficulties as kind of a mentor is really great. So you can always check out guilds or associations in your area, looking at local libraries or community centers for knitting or spinning groups, or really any other kind of crafting circle um, that they might have um, meeting there at, the, at those centers. Facebook has a lot of interest groups based on um, crafts, you know, individual crafts, and then also based on like locality. And same with Ravelry. Although I'm not sure somebody, I hope somebody replies to this, um, this podcast or, you know, here in the podcast or on YouTube is Ravelry. Is it, is it going dead? Cause I very rarely see anybody, um, talking on there anymore, but definitely there are interest groups, there are local groups, like there's a Frederick Folks group. Um, of course, there's groups like, you know, Flying Goat Farm, Ravelry Group, and that kind of thing. Um, and so that's another logical place to go. And then check with national organizations like the Hand Weavers Guild of America or the Knitting Guild Association. Um, I'm sure that there are others that would be for felting or crochet things like that, but the, the national organizations will have a list of um, guilds or groups that are in your local area. And I, I will put a link on the podcast page to those websites where you can find that information. 
So here it is. It's time for your creative exercise for this session. And I'm calling it Change It Up, Do It Differently. So again, to do so, to get out of your comfort zone a little bit, to see something new, feel something new, and that would be part of, you know, finding your new inspiration again. So you could cook something new, a new dish or cuisine, or you can go in, if, you're, if you don't like to cook, um, go to a restaurant and try a new dish or try a new cu cuisine, doing something different that's out of the ordinary. Go to an exhibit or a museum that is not art related. Um, I was just thinking about like, what, what would I do? Um, so there's like the B&O Museum where they have trains. I'm sure that there's some, like, there would be some cool pictures to take there, get some inspiration that way. If you're in the Midwest, you know, isn't there, there's like um, the Corn Palace. I don't even, you don't even have to go inside that one where they make these murals out of different grains and different colors of corn. It's like, so wild and interesting or you know there's isn't there like a giant ball of string somewhere um i think there is a, maybe it's a website or a book about um like roadside oddities or something like that so if you're on a trip like think about finding some of those weird places um read outside your usual genre if you um if you're somebody who likes a quick like mystery um, think about reading a memoir instead or vice versa. Listen to a different kind of music, a new kind of music. Um, watch a foreign movie or an unusual documentary. Something that, again, is outside of your usual. And by, by spending time doing something new and different, this will also get your creative juices going. So until next time, of course, I love hearing about your creative journeys. Please reply, leave a comment. Um, of course, you can subscribe uh, to the podcast on iTunes. Every other time that I've signed off, I've said, you know, you can subscribe on podcast, my, to the podcast on iTunes or Spotify. Um, right now with the current controversy, I'm asking you to listen to my podcast either on Anchor FM, where it lives, or on iTunes um, until they figure out uh, what they're going to do about misinformation. And until then, happy making.